Welcome to our online service of worship on this, the 11th week of Trinity. Hope that you are well and you've had a really good week. Thank you for joining us this morning. Shall we begin with our first song of worship? Our first reading this morning comes from Psalms, Psalm 67. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Or let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 56 and beginning at verse 1. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I 
I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 15 and beginning at verse 21. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us, challenging though it is. We pray that out of this difficult gospel this morning, we might understand what motivates you and what needs to motivate us. We ask this in your name. Amen. 
Well, there are some things that I just don't understand, and to be honest, this Bible passage is one of them. If you're looking for something fluffy and sentimental, then don't look at Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. This is one of those periods of time in the Gospels when Jesus seems to be deliberately upskittling people. Just before this event, a group of Pharisees had been offended by Jesus' comments to them about the keeping of the law. Basically, he was saying to them that it's not the keeping of the law, the bit on paper that says things about you. It's about what comes out of you from the inside that matters, whether what you say lives up to how you live your life. It's about how authentic you are. It was kind of saying it's the law versus how you live out your faith. And he was criticising them for not living it out in the right way. But then he goes to the region of Tyre and Sidon and meets a very insistent woman. Insistent because she has a daughter who is distressed and who is in need. And she's trusting that Jesus can do something about that. Problem number one is that it's a woman, so culturally that's difficult for her to approach him. Problem number two is that it's a, a Gentile woman, a Canaanite woman, an outsider. An outsider that insiders don't want to be around. She's not one of those chosen people, not one of the people of Israel. And you can imagine that life for her is not simple, nor is it easy. So sentimentality is not going to work with anyone from either side of this meeting, Jesus or the Canaanite woman. She needs help, so she comes to Jesus, but he ignores her. And then he calls her a dog. So what are we to do with that? Well, it's uncomfortable, and that's not the Jesus we want, but... That's the Jesus that we get in today's gospel. The thing is that um, Jesus then speaks about her to the disciples. They're looking at this woman and wanting the situation to go away. And so are very keen for him to send her away. They don't like her insistence. They don't like her shouting after them. They don't like the fact that she won't shut up and just go away. So he says to them, in kind of explanation of why he is ignoring her, I was sent only to the lost house of Israel. At which point she takes another action. She comes and kneels in front of him and says to him, Lord, help me. Dilemmas. There is Jesus with a dilemma. Do I stick to the original plan or give way? This original plan that I came to the house of Israel and not yet to share this message with all people? Or do I give way to this woman? She's a pleading woman, she's being loud in public. Does he walk away or does he give way? She has a dilemma too. Does she give up? Does she throw the proverbial toys out of the pram and dismiss him as a waste of space? Just another one that claims many things and will not listen to her. In front of, uh, with him in front of her, Jesus was silent. She could have gone home, argued or asked why, but she didn't. Instead, she stays there and begs, a bit like a dog. She continues to show up trusting that somehow it is enough and it will be enough to stick in and be there in front of him. And at some point he has to act. She doesn't know when or what he will do. She only knows that she will be there when he does do something. This time he answers. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. He called her a dog, an animal. Those words sound so harsh. They sound so wrong coming out of the mouth of Jesus. They are wrong, but maybe they're not about Jesus or the woman. Maybe Jesus is naming a reality here, the reality of the world in which they live. We see it every day. Some have and many do not. Some are in and others are out.
For some, life flourishes, others struggle to make it to the next day. He used the term children and dogs, we might say haves and have-nots. That's the world in which Jesus and this Canaanite woman meet. Life is neither simple nor easy, and she is, in these terms, one of the dogs that have knots, and she knows it, however distasteful that feels. She even agrees with Jesus, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. It's a kind of assertion, maybe with a wry smile, but she finds a way to show up and be present, even when it seems everyone and everything is against her. And do you know why? Can you guess why? Well, because she has a daughter that she loves. She has a daughter whose torment was her torment. To see her daughter like this was tearing her apart. And so she was prepared to publicly disgrace herself to get what she believed Jesus could give her, freedom. Maybe the chance to be one of the haves rather than the have-nots. But this woman's love was audacious and she was fixed on Jesus and she wasn't about to give way. This time Jesus though speaks and acts. Great is your faith, he tells her. And that very hour, her daughter is healed. So what do we do with that? Maybe she finally wore him down and Jesus relented to get her to be quiet and to go away. Maybe she was rewarded for her persistence. Maybe in the dilemma, Jesus weighed it up and decided that this woman's love for her daughter and her faith was worth far more than he had seen from the Pharisees a few moments before. Here was someone in front of him whose deep heart cry was being revealed in her actions. Not the duplicity of the law keepers, the Pharisees, but pure love being enacted in front of him. And so I've come to the conclusion that this story is one of a mother's love and how that love drives and motivates her to stick in and do what she feels she has to do. A woman who's prepared to put, put up with public humiliation and embarrassment for the sake of someone she loves deeply. And it's also the story of a saver who has the power to release her and her daughter, but who has a, dile a dilemma in front of him. Stick with the original plan or take an action, an action out of love, out of care and compassion for this woman and her daughter. He's weighing it up, she is following her heart. And I honestly don't know if that's the right interpretation, but I offer it to you. So what do we take uh, from this gospel story uh, into our week with us? Well, first of all, I think we can learn that love is the best motivator. There was a divide between this woman and Jesus when she approached him. I think there's something to learn here actually about the ways in which we begin to breach divides. We live in such a divided world. It's so apparent to us in, at this time. One in which I think we need to show up just like the woman did. We need to show up on behalf of those who have not, because to not show up only deepens the divide. I've no doubt that you and I are at a minimum vexed by some of the rhetoric and some of the actions around migrants, around boats in the channel and in other seas. It's so complicated and it's a concern over which we need to be open, in which we need to discuss in which we need to understand some of the complexities, the motivations of people who pay money to get into frail boats in order to seek what they believe will be a better life. There is division in the way that we handle these things as a world. And we need to somehow be motivated out of a love to do something about it as a global community. 
We must not turn away from these situations because if we turn away, we'll miss what God is doing. We'll miss the moments of healing, the words of forgiveness and the acts that transform lives. And sometimes we need to push and push harder and to be vocal and not to be passive. And we need to stick with it and stick in it, then perhaps for longer than we know. I, uh, the tragedy um, just off the coast of Africa in this last few days, with many people lost again in the sea. Some um, wise words, I think, from the Cape Verde health minister, who said immigration issues are global issues which re require international cooperation, a lot of discussion and a global strategy. It was a recognition from this minister that this was not one nation's problem. This is every nation's problem. And it is the thing that we need to come together in love to begin to work out how we deal with it. And so love is the best motivator. And secondly, I think we need to learn that we need to stick in with God and stick in with Jesus. Eventually, this woman got what she was desperate for, but it won't always be that way. We have all had the experience of praying and praying and not receiving that which we have prayed for. For there are no guarantees, because faith is not about certainty. It is about trust. It is about trusting the one in whom we believe. It is about trusting that God knows best and that God will guide. It is about deepening faith and deepening relationship. It is not always about getting the answers to prayer that we want. This is a challenging piece of scripture, I think, and one that challenges us in so many ways. It is a challenging piece of scripture that we need to take into our week, not just leave behind, of us, behind us, but the message of this gospel, I think, is that we need to stick with it. So shall we stick with it in this week and just ask God what he is saying to us through this very short account in Matthew's gospel? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we do thank you that love is a great motivator. We know that. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll fill us with your love and your love for situations in which we don't know what to do or how to do it, but a love that cries out for justice and for peace in the lives of those who do not have that justice. A love for those who are excluded a love for those who are set aside. A, lo a love for those who have not. And so, Lord, fill us with all that you want us to hear in this day. We ask this in your name. Amen.
Shall we pray? God of love, we give you thanks that no one is beyond your love, that your mercy and compassion are for all. This morning we bring before you in prayer the world, the church and ourselves. And we give you thanks that you hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. Lord, you see each person and know each heart. We remember in our prayers today those places in the world torn apart by war and oppression, injustice and poverty. We pray for those who have been affected by the devastating fires in Hawaii and in Greece. We'll remember in our prayers the refugees who have lost their lives on the sea this week. We pray for their families and for those who have survived. Lord, bring peace and stability to our world, we pray. In the dark places, would you bring your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the church, nationally and locally. We pray for our bishops, Stephen, David and Nicholas. We thank you for their leadership in this diocese. And we pray today for those who lead our local mission partnership, for Steve, for Penny and for Steve. God of love, would you empower them to continue to speak truth, to seek your heart and to be advocates for justice. We pray that in the coming weeks they would each know your guiding hand upon them, pray that you would help the church in this nation and in these benefices to be places of unity and flourishing for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community in need of a touch of healing today. We pray for those who are undergoing tests, for those undergoing treatment, and for those who walk the journey alongside them. God of healing, would you take away pain? Would you speak peace to troubled hearts and minds? And would you pour your healing streams? In a moment of stillness, we name before you those people who we know who are in need of your touch this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, who promised us eternal life, we remember in our prayers today those who are nearing the end of their earthly life. We remember those who have died, who we loved and miss, and we rejoice that they now rest in your presence. We thank you for the love we shared, for the memories which bring us joy. In the difficult days of grief, we ask, Lord, that you would be ever-present. May we know the hope you bring and the love that you surround us with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, loving God, we pray that you would surround each of us with your presence. May we know the guiding of your Spirit as we seek to walk the path you have set before us. We thank you that you promise to be always with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for this week. God of glory, the end of our searching helps us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price, 
through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, those that you love and those that you pray for, this day and always. Amen. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me this week in our worship together. We'll be back next week in person at um, Langworth and Reefham, and we'll be back uh, online as well. So have a great week, whatever you're up to, and I'll see lots of you very soon. Take care. Bye.